I know what some of you will say, in fact I believe there are a couple of elephants in the room. Why is this video so late, why is it shorter than I promised and why is it not in parts? To answer your questions, this video is shorter because I remade it. I was looking back at the original product and I didn't really like it since I started working on it immediately after Brackett's video came out. And I'm known to be overly emotional in videos in the sense that sometimes I make videos within less than a day ranting about how I feel in that period of time, and sometimes emotions can seriously hinder a video if you don't know what you're doing. I'm not as angry as when I first saw the video so hopefully this response will be coherent. I'm a guy with anger issues, and those issues I want to control so my response wouldn't be a dumpster fire. Another thing worth mentioning is that things have changed since I began working on that video, me and Brackett talked things out privately a couple days after he released his video and he believes his video is rather goofy in hindsight, even if he agrees with some of his points. In fact, recently Josh said we no longer have bad blood and I offered to discuss things on Discord if he had any questions, we'll get to why he said that later on. So to some extent that video would have been a little outdated before it came out. I also think that a shorter, more condensed video would be convincing for those wanting to hear me out, but think a 3 hour long video is overwhelming. It's also for those who want to see juicy blocky drama but don't have the patience for 3 hours worth of content. Maybe this video will convince people, maybe it'll convince nobody and cause a shit show, I'll just have to wait and see. I believe a response that gets my point across the best that can is better than a response that came out as quickly as possible. With that said, let's get on to Brackett's video. But first context. So there's this guy named the Package the Reviewer, what he used to do before he quit was make rant videos about people on DeviantArt and later on, YouTubers. These videos ranged from criticizing bad or mediocre art, to calling out creeps that infested the site. A year ago, I made a video pointing out what I perceived as hypocrisy, that video wasn't very good and I'll explain why in a bit. Then a year after that video, I made a full rant about why I hated his channel. This is the main video bracket covers. I would later make two videos on a guy named Cool Speedy Josh, both of which I dislike, one of which bracket covers. After he covers the two videos, he brings up community posts and Twitter posts of mine to criticize me, ultimately concluding I am not worth engaging with. This video is here, to cover Brackett's video. With that said, let's get on with it. Now the reason I felt obligated to make this video was because I had definitely messed up during this whole situation, Brackett for as bad and mediocre a majority of his points are, was able to catch me with my pants down a couple times. Hell, it's the reason I made this community post, because I realized the response was taking a while and there were things I truly regret. But if you read the post, you'd know I said my two biggest fuck ups were the Pappy Animate shit, and making a video calling Josh a predator. I'll elaborate on the Pappy Animate mess up first since it came before the Josh one. I think the best way to describe the fuck up is to dissect the shit post I made. Just because someone puts an 11 year old boy in inflation art doesn't mean it's them a pedophile since it's legal. Okay, let me put it this way. If you draw a child in a scenario which you find arousing in any way, that is called pedophilia. Since you seem to be attracted to said child, fictional or not. Hello everyone, the Package Reviewer here, and I have found a really interesting and disgusting topic that I've been willing to tackle for quite some time. 
Just looking at this guy's content makes my blood boil and at the same time wanting to vomit. But I guess I have no choice but to make a video on him anyway to bring awareness to how scummy he is. The user in particular goes by the name of Package Rear. Now, I had put up text in the original video so I'll read it out for those merely listening to this as background noise. The text reads and I quote, That nigga is known for sexual content of Kalu and Elmo, fictional four-year-olds. Half of his content is born of fictional minors, yet 21-year-old man likes the content. Now I get what I was going for, I was pointing out the double standard I believed. To be funny, I barely even knew who Pappy was, but there are three issues with this short. Number 1, the use of the term sexual content. Looking at his content now, I can tell he's clearly just making edgy content akin to South Park, but back then, I was a retard. I just saw his clickbait thumbnails and titles and compared it to the stuff Andrew, the guy box was talking about, was making. By using the term sexual content while saying it was made out of four-year-olds, I implied Pappy was a pedophile. Even if I don't intend on saying he's a pedophile, people will connect those dots and come to the conclusion he's a pedophile based on what I said. Number 2, something you should have noticed about the post I put out was that I said the Pappy stuff still works as a hypocrisy point. Let me explain. In Box's video, he says this. He drew not one, but two pictures of his persona making out with Lincoln. What's worse is that he calls it a joke, despite him using his usual art style and not in one of those ironic shitty art styles. Box was trying to argue Andrew's art wasn't a joke or wasn't ironic because he drew those pictures of a fictional 10 year old with his usual art style, by that logic, Pappy's art isn't a joke because he consistently uses Go Animate. What doesn't help is that Box never really explained what an ironic shitty art style even was. Andrew's art style doesn't fall under that category apparently. Many people use Go Animate in complete earnest so if we use Box's logic, Pappy gets fucked over. My hypocrisy point would work had that clip been shown, however, I want to state that the clip was in my YouTube Abominations video and Box, explaining the Undertale music in the background. This will be important later. The final reason I hate that video is the format, it was a quick shit post. Quick both in the sense of it being short, and in the sense of it taking like half an hour to make. There are more layers to the point than just a black and white box said this but did what he criticized point. Without that clip I just showed, context would be lost. Now we get to the Josh video bracket talks about. I'll say this, had I kept my coverage of Josh at Box's defense of him and never said anything about his character, there wouldn't be an issue, let me explain. Box's defense sucked. Minute mark, it becomes about grooming allegations being made towards his friends. Now we aren't given enough context for a lot of these allegations and the video to say one way or the other so I won't comment on the validity, however I will comment, about the very end. The part where his friend, Josh, is accused of grooming a 13 year old at 17. After the whole debacle, Guankin called out a few particular people and even exposed Spacey's IRL name out of spite. Guankin then decided to join forces with Will G, and even go as far as accusing Josh of pedophilia, which he knows damn well he flirted with him first. Besides, you both are still minors, it's not even remotely pedophilia if nobody's an adult. Now let's get something out of the way, I no longer believe Josh is a predator, however, that arguably makes Box's defense of Josh even worse because think about it, Box was defending the act of a 17 year old flirting with a 12 year old while at the same time implicating Joshua he defended what Josh was accused of while making Josh, despite there being no evidence of him flirting with a 12 year old, look like a predator to someone out of the loop. It'd be like if some guy falsely accused me of committing a murder and one of my friends defends me under the case of murder not being a bad thing, makes me look really fucking bad and makes my friend a degenerate. However, that's not where things ended, I made two videos on Josh, 
one of them not being too notable, I basically took a look at Josh's response to me and his response was a giant nothing burger. He didn't actually make points as to why I'm wrong, just vaguely suggested my video on box was misinformation whilst shedding on emoji marbles, which I don't know about you, but that doesn't convince anyone of anything, now does it? I think the worst I did was play a clip from my box video and said something like I don't wanna hear, you bring up marbles past when you did this, which crossed that line from shitting on Package's defense of him, to shitting on him for the accusations, which is where there's an issue. But it's not as bad as my second Josh video, for context. My second video and Josh centered around a video on Quankin made by the Litterbox critic and at some point I planned on covering that entire shit show, but that ultimately never happened. In that clip, Litterbox critic got Josh on to tell his side of the story, and I felt a clip of Josh was off. Oh boy, Quankin, the femboy, the gross one, the one who couldn't even beat Glass Joe. To be honest, before that fateful day, I did actually see Guankin as somewhat of a friend. We used to do stuff together, play games together, react to things together, hell, we even hosted Discord sleepovers. And when me and some friends joked about how he has a crush on me, he denies having a crush on me to play along with a joke. And it was meant to be that way. Or at least, I wished. You see, after we dropped Guankin from our friend group, I got notified about Guankin's crush on me was unironic. At first, I didn't mind it since I thought they said ironic, but then Kenster told me in a VC that it was ironic. And I went back to Kathy's DM and I was like, oh god. Like, I wasn't aware that Guankin had an actual crush on me, but after hearing the news, I was creeped out. Actually creeped out. It's already concerning given the age gap between me and Guankin. Keep in mind, it was a half decade gap. And after reflecting on the whole thing, me and my friends noticed some red flags. For one, he constantly called me Joshy Poo, which is an odd name to say the least. Two, I remember several instances where he gave me virtual cringe- I mean, kisses. Which is- which are honestly pretty cringeworthy to listen to. And three, he never said anything about wanting to end the joke. If he were to ask us to end a joke, we would have done it. We did it before with the femboy joke and he, when he asked us to stop doing it, so we would have definitely done it again if he were to ask. Now there are a couple issues right off the bat, like how you can tell I went and providing the least charitable interpretation considering I had text in the video sarcastically say sure you were buddy when he said he was creeped out, which was gross of me because I had no evidence to say my suspicion had merit. But the big issue was me covering a situation with a lack of evidence. The claim being, made is that Josh flirted with a 12 year old in discord calls, calls that have not been archived, nor was I in, meaning I had no idea what was going on. That's ultimately the issue, I had very little context outside of box making him look insanely bad and just went with what I thought happened as opposed to what I saw happen. Meaning that number one, I had no idea the extent of Josh's involvement, did he just make jokes or was he doing more? That I didn't know. Number 2, how old Josh thought Quankin was, depending on who you ask you will get different answers, Josh's friend saying Quankin claimed to be Josh's age while Quankin would say Josh thought he was much younger. Number 3, what Josh actually meant by not minding, not minding in this context can mean enjoying the flirting, but it can, also mean being uncomfortable by it just not paying much attention to it. All these questions I can't answer because evidence isn't out there. Because I couldn't provide answers to these questions, that means I didn't have good evidence, and pushed a faulty accusation based on at most, suspicion and his friends implicating him, which is incredibly reckless. It's safe to say I definitely fucked up, during this situation, there's no arguing otherwise. However, while I've messed up, that doesn't make Brackett's video good, in fact it's downright bad, here's why. <music> Bias isn't inherently a bad thing, everyone to some extent is biased, however, when your bias is overclouding your ability to think logical, you should step back for a second. 
When Brackett was making his video on me, he believed I was both this malicious figure who spread extreme narratives about people, and this idiot who was manipulated by two people known as Will G and Lunkin. I want you to explain to me how those two mindset don't contradict each other. The moment your hatred of someone is that irrational, cracks are bound to form. Although Brackett had the opposite problem with Box, where he was unreasonably charitable with him. For an example, when talking about the Tana Sweet situation, he described Box's comment about her not being a pedophile as an overcorrection. Before we get to that though, Baki makes the ballsy choice to compare the 2017 Meegs rant to one he made about 5 years later on the user Tana Sweet. But the main issue I have with it is his apart about this freak's fetish art. Something I want you to keep in mind is that this degenerate fuck package is talking about is a full grown adult and was 25 when package made this video. You'll see why I told you to keep that in mind later. Tana Sweet's fetish art of focus was with the characters from the Loud House being used for fat fetish material. Tana herself even labeled this material as the fetish house. Worst of all though, is Tana repeatedly fetishized the live action spin-off versions, much of which based off of child actors. Fictional characters are one thing, but it's a lot more concerning when actual minors are involved. I've come to really hate the term degenerate since it's often abused, but it's hard to argue against its use here. In Box his video though, he says this. Honestly, calling Tana a pedo is a bit of a stretch. Which, uh, no, Box. I would not at all say it's a stretch she'd be a pedo given what's been displayed. But, like the degen term, I am cautious when making claims that someone is a pedophile, especially with fictional material. This is one case where there's solid evidence hinting she is, but I'm not in the position to confirm that beyond allegations. The point here though is that this more charitable stance is the polar opposite to the previous example, which jumped immediately to calling the target a pedo for much less might I add. Even with the time gap, that is an odd shift in attitude, and I don't mind this inconsistency being criticized. Blocky though, how does he take it? The foolishness of that comment is- Oh yeah, a clip of Dennis Prager. Can I just write out this response on principle or something? Okay, I won't be that dismissive. Here's what he actually says. So a grown-ass adult sexualizing children, both fictional and real is not a pedophile you say? Fascinating. Like we're beyond fictional characters, this freak is sexualizing the child actors of some shit Nickelodeon sitcom and yet Package is so charitable. Overall, it's not too different from what I said earlier, just more aggressive. Although, this really showcases how bad of an idea it was to bring up a past incident from this long ago to fire back at Box. The point in the newer video was already ripe for the picking, you didn't need to add extra baggage. If anything, this leniency can be better explained as an overcorrection of his previous unsubstantial claim of pedophilia. Believe me, I've had similar instances where such overcorrection harms a point I make. Like sure, criticize him for being too lenient, but even then, it's not like he's defending this material either, he still finds it worrying at least. Look, I understand that people on DeviantArt have the right to draw fetishes, but at least have some standards when drawing that kind of stuff. Otherwise, certain people will paint you as a sickening individual. Oh. Here's the issue with the overcorrection claim. Box hasn't done anything to correct the MIGS rant. The only time he addressed was in in questions and answers video from 2020, which Box implies the opposite of him correcting false pedophile accusations. Which review that you personally feel like it should be remade, that was either terrible, or you made some mistakes or misinformed on a certain subject? Quite a few of them actually, most of them being some rants from 2017 to 18, or before my one year hiatus. My Kalobi rant was extremely rushed, hence why I disowned it. My Meeg's rant was just stating the obvious and poorly structured. My Bartoon's rant has a ton of editing errors and the majority of the video was just reading comments. My Ace Moon Thunder rant was just, again, poorly structured. I even called a 12 year old a pedo in that. When he doesn't correct the claim, and says he stated the obvious, what other conclusion am I supposed to come to than him doubling down? It's especially worrying because he acknowledged calling a 12 year old a pedophile, but not the 14 year old. So if anything, there's this really unfortunate implication he knows the accusation he made towards Miggs was false, but isn't correcting it. Something, they'll notice his bracket leaving out or not talking about clips that make my points a lot more reasonable. Admittedly, I can't blame Bracket for being biased, at least, if he didn't have my discord. He knew Box way before he knew me and had some form of contact with him, 
while Brackett did have my discord, he wasn't interested in communicating with me because he assumed the least charitable interpretation, and I think that's a shame because I can tell these issues come from that, and Brackett's video could have been really insightful had he gone in neutral, because newsflash, this isn't a black and white package good blocky bad drama. We've both messed up, I had both good points and bad points, and even then, a lot of my bad points work on some level, like the pappy shit proving, hypocrisy, they were just too flawed to call good points, so this is a situation that would have benefited from Brackett actually wanting a discussion, but he wasn't interested in that. But anyways, I think enough has been said about this goon and all related dramas. Blocky is someone you should not engage with. He doesn't give a lizard's ass about helping victims. He's basically cut from the same cloth as a go commentator who wanted to be drama alert, with a similar lack of self-awareness or concept of time. He's already willing to revive dramas from years ago like the Quonkin thing, and also use videos as early as 2017, when Box started, to make a point. There's also a fixation on Box's alleged hypocrisy, an obsession that only go commentators commentators and drama farmers focus on this heavily. Genuinely, his video on Vox is up there with the worst videos I have ever seen. No exaggeration. From shoddy production, glue huffing takes, agonizing repetition, unlikable demeanor, and potential slander towards Vox and others. The worst part is that because he is so goddamn desperate to milk this situation far beyond the point of dehydration, a response video will inevitably be made by Blocky or one of his cronies shortly after this releases. And I will refuse to platform such stool unless somehow they manage to succeed at being decent fucking people and folks those odds aren't looking right this is what we call poisoning the well bracket makes a bunch of character attacks to make me seem as bad as possible in order to discredit a possible response even saying that me making a response to his video is me being so desperate to milk drama trying to put my response in this position of being bad for merely existing rule of thumb if someone making a commentary expresses that they don't want the other side to make a response or that it's a bad thing if they make a response, you should be more willing to hear the other side and be a little more skeptical of the claims about them because that clearly shows a lack of confidence in the commentary being good, especially in a case like mine where I am this small nobody YouTuber, it's a lot easier to make a bad point without people noticing if the person you're doing it to is less known and that's especially the case if they're disliked. I also point this out because him not actually trying to convince me of anything allows his points to get sloppy. In this situation, it's easier to convince an audience who either don't know Bracket and most likely aren't paying too much attention to this drama, people who already hate me and will automatically be biased in his favor, or fans of him, meaning that as long as he sells people on the idea that he's this likable guy, the general audience will be more on board to believe what he says. Meanwhile, I am harder to convince, solely because me and Brackett had interactions before this and we didn't like each other, so I'm obviously going to be more skeptical of the guy I didn't like very much. Case in point, Brackett makes a laundry list on why Will G is a piece of shit, but it's not very convincing to me someone who won't automatically believe Bracket based on word of mouth. And that's due to the figures involved in the narrative. Mentioned in the previous clip was a guy dubbed Will G, also known as Ray or Dylan's Rolling Network. Within the span of four years, he's held a grudge against Josh which continues to this very day. He's harassed and stalked him along with others in his circle of friends, and spread lies about them through various accounts and rebrands. Important to note here that Gwonkin had to have known of his vendetta because Josh frequently mentioned the subject. From this moment, they both shared a common enemy. You notice how Brackett shows next to nothing in terms of evidence, he makes big claim with tiny evidence. The closest thing to evidence we get is Brackett showing one of Will's channels for the claim of them spreading lies, but it's not good evidence since it just show video titles and thumbnail, not points he makes. This is especially true because Will's titles don't make points. All of them are, vague enough that if you're an outsider, you have to watch the video to find out what Will's talking about. Bracket also makes more claims about Will being a bad person, to which they're also not convincing to me. They can't play the moralist game either, with how much atrocious shit Gwonkin and associates are tied to. This is especially true when it comes to Will G, who spammed Josh Pornhub links when he was a minor and allegedly impersonated others online, both of which can have serious legal consequences. Again, two claims that sound damning, while we're shown nothing. 
If the audience believes he's this likable guy, they'll trust him, therefore believing Will has done all of these things, meanwhile because I didn't trust him, I saw nothing of value being shown to me. Maybe Will did all of these things, maybe he didn't, I don't know, but I'm not leaving the video convinced of anything. At best, this was unintentional, but this guy wants to shit on my videos and shit on me for being a bad commentator, meanwhile he failed to do one of the most basic things in commentary. What was also more noticeable to me than to others is both sides not being presented fairly. Surprising. So when this one degenerate draws fetish art out of fictional children, it's pedophilia. But when this older freak makes fetish content out of both fictional kids and child actors, it's a stretch to say they're a pedophile. It's even worse because Package is chill with some go animate freak that dedicates his channel to making sexual content out of kid characters like Caillou, Elmo and Bling Bling, boy. Okay, what? Yeah, we're going there. Blocky has a bone to pick with the GoTuber Pappy Animate, essentially a satirical channel who uploads absurd comedic go animate content. Some of it does involve characters who are canonically children doing sexual acts. You could call that questionable, dubious even, to include. Though frankly, I think it's a stretch to call these smut in nature, especially given their ridiculousness and the comedic slant Pappy videos typically have. As far as those themes go, it's more in South Park tier than, well, Big Mouth. But I'm not here to debate the ethics of Elmo violating a giant tomato. What the fuck? Instead, I'm focused on how Blocky tries to make a grand statement about Box subscribing to this doof and confirming his hypocrisy. Actually, a second attempt, as apparently he already did that a year ago. Last year, one made a shit post about his hypocrisy. One made a shit post- BITCH! That was you, you ain't fooling me. But whatever, let's just hear him out. So a guy's who whole branding is sexualizing child characters is fine according to Package. He'll subscribe and find his videos humorous. But if he doesn't care too much for someone, them sexualizing children is bad. And if Package full on hates you, then you're a pedophile for sexualizing kids. Shit, we're already being this presumptuous? To the point of possible defamation? <sighs> Well, god damn it, let's dissect this garbage. Firstly, with Pappy, claiming his entire branding is of the questionable shit mentioned earlier is beyond ignorant. Checking his most recent material, a lot of the specifically sexual stuff like the CBT thing hasn't been the feature. These still do contain dark humor here and there, but nowhere near as explicit. Then again, considering the claim looks to be based on a years old perception and these offending videos remain up, I guess that's a detail you'd miss. Back to Box though. The actual argument Blocky's making is that his terms on how he treats suspected pedos are based on how much he can tolerate the person. You know, putting aside the mentioned rants being from different eras and context being sorely missed here. This attitude continues for another section which briefly delves into a controversy from 2022, one that has unfortunately come back to relevance thanks to this video. Fair enough, I use the term freak weight too casually and we all know why the claim of his content being porn is ridiculous. However, Notice how Brackett never played that clip of Box arguing Henry's art wasn't a joke due to art style. By Box's logic, Pappy's videos would have been sexualizing kids, would they not? Had Brackett played that clip, there could have been a more nuanced and insightful conversation to be had, but instead it's just a black and white block he is bad and Box did nothing wrong point. Which is a damn shame, because I agree I was a retard. But I disagree with this not being an inconsistency on Box's part. This is also something that was done when discussing the Josh accusations, I agree I was a retard, but Brackett could have made a damn good point about how Box's response could lead someone to believing Josh is a predator and yet he didn't go for it. So, thanks for that. What if I told you he defended his 17-year-old friend flirting with a 13-year-old? Yeah, Pac Boy made a video calling out someone and by the one minute mark, it becomes about grooming allegations being made toward his friends. For those not in the know, there was a former member who found his way into circles Box and friends were in named Gwonkin, aka Dead by Grimlight or Dead Darn Dusk. After some very concerning behavior, he was kicked out of Boxes and all other related Discord servers. Around this time, Gwonkin would make grooming accusations against two people who were tied to Box in some way. The first accused was Albertronic, who was engaging in tickle RPs and DMs with Gwonkin, and the second one named Cool Sweetie Josh is claimed to have flirted with the victim. Just to make things abundantly clear, I'm not defending the 
actions of either two. However, the way Guankin told the story falls close to gaslighting territory. Neither party was made aware that he was 12 to 13 at the time of both incidents. The case against Albert was more reasonable to accuse of grooming, even if he was only 16, but Josh's case has received skepticism. I'll link additional info about this in the description, but the part Blocky focuses on is related to Josh's accusations. Guankin then decided to join forces with Will G, and even go as far as accusing Josh of pedophilia, which he knows damn well he flirted with him first. Besides, you both are still minors, it's not even remotely pedophilia if nobody's an adult. So if you're a friend of Pac-Man, he'll excuse whatever you do, even if it goes against his values. Like remember all the videos he's made calling children pedophiles and never corrected. Yeah, calling those children below the age of 16 pedophiles is cool, but calling a 17-year-old flirting with a 13-year-old a groomer is just too far, man. I will say, even if Guankin flirted first, that wouldn't excuse Josh doing such an act as well. That being said, it appears that Guankin had a one-sided crush on the person. Josh was not even aware he had a crush on him until he left the community, either. Most interactions between the two took place in VCs rather than DMs, which has made it harder to verify. It's even been alleged that Guankin faked his his age as well, although that hasn't been confirmed in this case yet. We do know that he didn't disclose his age to Albert upon his request, and those interactions were closer to what has been described. I want to be charitable in the case that Josh actually did flirt back to the victim, something he claims didn't happen. If it did, that would be gross, even with Josh being unaware of their age. I just have a hard time believing that story, or the claims of grooming and pedophilia it's attached to. The worst case scenario I can imagine is that Josh unknowingly enabled Gwonkin's behavior. Wouldn't be great, but I don't sense any creepy intent from them, something that would be needed to make these bold claims of grooming. And to even claim possible pedophilia, Josh would have to know the victim's age during this, which he didn't. And unlike the case with Henry, Josh wasn't posting material that would raise more suspicions. There is one other reason why I have doubts, and that's due to the figures involved in the narrative. Bracket will also not understand what I'm going for like when talking about that Dark Lord Henry. Although, Blocky does make an extra point right after, and uses a different rain of boxes to prove it. And I'd get it if he was often charitable in his content, but he isn't. He has called people pedophiles for less than sexualizing real children. Whether those people be literal children or adults. Just because someone puts an 11-year-old boy in inflation art doesn't mean it's them a pedophile since it's legal. Okay, let me put it this way. If you draw a child in a scenario which you find arousing in any way, that is called pedophilia. Since you seem to be attracted to said child, fictional or not. That clip comes from his rant on Pink Kitty 935 also known as Dark Lord Henry. That rant isn't super recent either, but at least it was released by the tail end of 2020. That rant in general was far less forgiving on the topic of pedophilia compared to the Tana Sweet one, although not as harsh as the Meeg's one. The clip shown is referring to Henry's questionable kink art of Lincoln Loud, an 11-year-old boy, some of which involving Henry themselves. <laughs> This person also made numerous statements about defending this fetish art, including one where they say age is just a number in fiction. Blocky does insert this text saying they were 17 to 18 at the time and does state it doesn't excuse such gross takes and behavior, though it is weird he brought that up considering this statement near the beginning. You cannot be a pedophile below the age of 16. Whose determination is that doesn't matter in this case. You admit that Henry was at least 17, basically making it possible for them to be a pedo by your own rules. Hey Bracket. Where did they say Henry, also now known as Andrew was or wasn't a pedophile? Oh wait, I didn't say that. The reason I brought that up was because Tana Sweet was a full grown adult while Henry would have either been a minor, or barely an adult. I bring this up because it would make more sense for one to be charitable to the 17 year old instead of the 25 year old. Now am I saying I agree with that level of leniency? No, but I can understand why one would be more lenient towards Andrew. This is a point I highlight because someone came up to me in private and asked about that since they were under the belief I was defending Andrew. I didn't make my video to defend his targets as people outside of the rants or shit on them, just pointing out that his content sucks. This misunderstanding will especially confuse people who simply listen to videos like this and aren't actively looking at visuals. This isn't the only thing that'll confuse people listening in the background. Remember the claim about Will G sending Josh porn? If you were looking at screen, you would have seen text clarifying that Will was also minor when that was stated to have happened, so, congrats, because Bracket failed to clarify such verbally, 
you might have been walking out of the video thinking well she was a child predator as opposed to walking out knowing Brackett was making a sexual harassment claim. A lot of points made against me are also assumptions, whether they be minor, like me being right wing, which no, I'm not right wing, I am a leftist who hates both political parties. Bracket brings up me using a Dennis Prager clip to make a buy your logic point, but I don't watch that nigga outside of that clip of him saying something was so stupid you had to have gone to college to say it, which I thought was funny and a what you said was so stupid you have to be intentionally saying stupid shit way. It doesn't work as a hypocrisy point because he can't prove I've watched him outside of that claim while I've proven package knows of the pappy videos I was referring to, but it's not the worst point in the world. Like bracket come on, how you gonna shit on me and then be worse at this in the same video. Bracket at the end of his video starts talking about how I suck outside of those videos on Box and Josh. One of his points being that I replied to a dead person around the time they were dead, which I didn't even know that person or the fact they were dead, I just found a tweet of theirs I thought was funny and replied to it. Something Brackett realized could have been resolved in private, but was hesitant to reach out to me. The thing that pissed me off the most when I first saw his video was when he talked about the imposter account situation, if you're unaware. Someone on Twitter decided to make an imposter account out of me, I'm currently unaware on who made it but I have my suspicions. Brackett would find this imposter thinking it was me and I made a post about it, something worth noting is that Brackett, acknowledged he made a mistake. So you'd think it end there? Wrong, Brackett failed to correct it after acknowledging such, which pissed me off because one of his replies to the account implied I was a groomer because of an account I had no control of, so I tried getting his attention, whether by Twitter messages, which he apparently didn't see to be fair, Twitter posts, which he shows in the video, and Discord messages, which was when he finally did something to correct that fuck up. I thought it was ironic how he was calling me sickeningly dishonest, meanwhile he couldn't correct the tweet that implied I was a groomer, over a tweet he told me he knew wasn't sent by me. After acknowledging he was wrong in his belief the account was actually me. Meanwhile I believed what I said in my Josh and Box videos when I uploaded them, so for Bracket to call me sickening dishonest was ironic and I called it out. This is his response to that. Tangling out two people that blocked him on Twitter. And while I'm on that note, I managed to get tangled into this bullshit myself. In late April, I was made aware of a Twitter profile for Mr. Blocky under the tag Blocky Dumbass. In it, I found loads of absurd and outlandish claims that were made on it. Sometimes it'd be funny bad tweets such as, Nick O'Connor was cringe, I've never played video games. But more often these would be followed by, Too mad is innocent. Defius here should come back. South Park grooms people into being pedophiles, and my personal favorite, chibi art is the pro shipper style and all chibi artists are pro shippers. That last one also connects to a few tweets which were made against the art YouTuber Thuman, who spoke out against such conflation. One tweet however really caught my eye, and this one I just have to read verbatim. Why staying close to groomers when you can always have me? I'll always have their back and defend them to give them justice. Uh, what the fuck? Notice how these tweets look like the kind of tweets a troll would post if they managed to hack someone they didn't like. The South Park tweet is clearly as fucking glorious, but not something I'd say seriously. I haven't pay much mind to the too mad shit, just hearing he died and was a pedophile, so I wouldn't tell you he's innocent, I don't even know what the fuck a pro ship art style is, and that tweet sounds like a troll anyways. The human tweet is another obvious bait tweet, I don't even watch their content and the tweet brings up a controversial figure to get attention. The only one of these I agree with earnestly is the leafy is here one, his ban was bullshit, but that's more an issue with YouTube being shit rather than me being a diehard leafy fan. The only way I can see people falling for this account was if they thought I was trolling people, especially because of tweets like the groomer one. That tweet is the equivalent of hacking a white person's account and writing about how black people should be slaves again with it. Doesn't that sound suspiciously like grooming to you? 
At the very least, writing off a victim's trauma and being real clingy towards them? I thought it did. So much so, I actually responded to it. Later on, the account responded back with, The fuck? How did you find me? Blocky dumbass. Emphasis on dumb. Your account wasn't on private. A Wouldn't that make you more suspicious? You're not a big creator and the account was public. If you were a big creator, I'd probably make a little comment about a big creator noticing me. And I mean like nostalgia critic or angry video game nerd big, but I'd also make an actual response. Bracket if someone made an account with your name and said they eat shit and shit that shit out, is that account yours because it has your name on it? Anyone could find your tweets, including a total duke on- duke? <laughs> including a dork like me. Following this, they later replied again, assuming I was part of this stalker part of the community, whatever that is. A day later, I would reply to one of the previously mentioned tweets, generalizing chibi artists as pro shippers, calling it out for what it was. I was then greeted by everyone's favorite response, FUCK OFF! I saw this as them not being able to back up their argument, where they later admitted to always being right. As such, I called out their ego and how their claim hurts innocent artists. If I was in that position, I'd ask for an elaboration and then argue from there. I think this is proof you really didn't know who I was during this whole situation, explaining bias. If anything, my issue is that I'd argue about stupid shit until my thumbs fell off. Also I don't always believe I'm right, shocker. I know. Also, hi Gwonk. After that, I felt it was wasteful continuing to engage. But little did I know, I was led astray by all of this. Turns out that this blocky dumbass guy I interacted with was not the real Mr. Blocky. They were apparently a fake designed to mimic his persona and mannerisms. The real one goes under the tag, Brick Dude. Now, when I first heard this news, I was actually really skeptical of that. Some of that was probably confirmation bias. Ah, ah, he said it, he said it. But there was something eerily accurate about it. A lot of what was said mirrored his own videos and comments, like these Pappy Anime tweets. They've also got the whole moralist overreach down, like with the South Park grooming claims. He also had that holier-than-thou attitude, which his own personality really highlights. Most egregiously though, this account was used to try platforming Gwonkin's own grooming case, even starting the hashtag Justice for Grime. Plus one for himself because I assume he's a narcissist. I'll give you the Pappy Anime tweets being similar. I fucked up by calling him a freak and his content porn, but the others aren't similar. Also justice for Mr. Blocky? Nigga I don't do hashtags like that in the first place, especially not for myself, like I'll admit I've been a corny ass nigga in the past, but not even would I do that. Also, you notice how the account says it'll defend, groomers and then claim to want to help those who come with grooming accusations. Almost like the account was a troll. And I wouldn't be so annoyed by this, but you'll see why I'm a little harsher on this segment later on. It also suggested directly attacking groomers out of revenge, essentially vigilantism, was the best course of action, a dangerous position also practiced by Guankin. Another tweet that contradicts the grooming one, and isn't something I would say, impressive. I wouldn't tell a grooming victim, especially one as young as Guankin, to talk to their groomers. I'd want them to block them. Here's the most important detail. At this time, Blocky didn't even promote his own Twitter at the point we found this, meaning we couldn't have possibly known it was a fake until he admitted it. On top of that, Blocky himself took a weirdly long time to even address the imposter. This could be due to his Twitter being more secretive and not that active, but it only seems like he gave a fuck when I mistook them as Blocky himself. How convenient. Co I didn't even know the account existed until I found you replying to it because I'm not that active on Twitter. It's that simple. Coupled with the other similarities across both accounts, can you blame me for falling for this poser? Currently, it is unknown who is behind this imposter account. However, this is where the real Blocky actually has a bone to pick with me following my responses. Besides a brief Twitter jab, he also made a community post on YouTube about me falling for the fake. It's written just like the drivel he spat towards Box. Something a little funny about Bracket Neutron. When some troll, an obvious one at that, makes an imposter account out of me on Twitter, and the account makes intentionally bad arguments, this goober actually responds. But when I'm actually responding to Racket, suddenly it's hush hush. These people are jokes. This response of mine will probably be enshrined in infamy, to Blocky's audience at least. Yeah, because it communicated to me that you found out it was a fake and didn't correct your tweet for two weeks. 
Obviously I'd be stressed out about that. You know how opportunistic niggas can get. I am a total idiot. Now, despite admitting this, I had not actually deleted my responses until the end of May. Because of this, Blocky contacted me on Discord to bug me about it, under the name Frydude. Dishonestly, he claims to be a party speaking on his behalf. To be honest, I believed you were ducking me on Twitter so I assumed that approach would work, and it got results. Like I hate this segment bitching about how I was bugging you because nigga you publicly posted a false accusations, I wouldn't have needed to bug you if you corrected it. It's the same shit with Box, I don't care if his videos are from last week or a decade ago, if misinformation isn't corrected, I don't care about how long it's been. Make false accusations about me and I'll shit on you until you correct it, I simply lack sympathy when I'm the one getting extreme accusations, I'm sorry but all you had to do was not have your public tweet imply I was a groomer, it was an easy fix. You just had to remove the misinformation. Although this YouTube comment replying to somebody else critical of him confirms that Fry is indeed blocky. He's also randomly brought up this topic in certain YouTube comment sections. Now sure, I should have deleted my responses to the identity thief much sooner. However, Blocky got really defensive about his own reputation following this mess. In his mind, I explicitly called him a groomer, based off the previous tweet from the faker, which, ironically, sounded grossly similar to that of a groomer. To be clear, there is there is no evidence of Blocky himself being one, and I don't like using sensitive terms like these lightly. Please don't spread any accusations about him unless solid evidence is there. That said, I do feel this argument unintentionally gave him a taste of his own medicine. While he wasn't the one who began the narrative of Josh being a groomer with shaky evidence, he did help spread and revive it. But unlike that situation, I only said that Blocky sounded like a groomer, not that he actually was one. I'm telling you, basic literacy is something these moralists have trouble even grasping. Fantastic argument, Blocky I didn't call you a groomer I merely heavily implied such by saying you sound like one. Also a taste of my own medicine nigga? Now that doesn't make any logical sense, you knew it was a fake after I made that post and I got stressed out because it took you a while to correct misinformation, I believed what I said about Josh, and by the time I didn't my video was no longer up. But also, you want to criticize my unlikable demeanor. I get it, I can be an asshole, but are you really much better if you're shitting on the guy you spread misinformation about this heavily while also defending the comment? Like I get confirmation bias causing you to believe the account was actually me, and I get shitting on me because you believe my tweets are similar, at least to some extent, you didn't need most of this segment shitting on me, because that's all I really got from this segment. You shitting on me in one line saying you probably should have deleted the tweet once you found out. How do you shit on someone for being a bad commentator, and then when you objectively fucked up, not even take an L, you felt the need to defend your false implication and assumed the worst case scenario about me in order to say it was a taste of my own medicine? I understand not feeling sympathy, I can be an asshole, but the fact you struggle to take that L is what makes this segment annoy me. All you had to say was that you saw an imposter account, fell for it, that you should have deleted the tweet sooner, and that I'm not a groomer. Maybe shit on me a little if you feel the need to, but not to this extent. Yet you somehow fumbled that up. Like these. And because he comes from the Ben Shapiro school of debate, he's not above harassing people and thinking he's always in the right whenever they refuse to participate. Now with regards to this commitment, for the sake of argument, let's assume that I'm never going to give you up, never going to let you down, and never going to run around and desert you. For the sake of argument, let's also assume that I'll never make you cry, say goodbye, or tell a lie that will hurt you. In conclusion, for the sake of argument, let's agree that my commitment to you is ironclad and that my love is genuine. For the record, I think Ben Shapiro is a big dumb poopy head. Yes, I do find it funny when people talk shit while blocking me, wouldn't call it this evil malicious harassment but whatever. I think I've proven my point that this video sucks. As embarrassing as this is going to sound, I actually had expectations for this video. Bracket Neutron is someone who has been doing commentary for nearly a decade at this point. I didn't expect a good video, but I expected much better than this. I had fucked up during this situation, absolutely, but this video, at its very best, is still pretty bad. Especially by the end where he talks about 
that imposter account and his conclusion. The only reason I'm not as harsh as Bracket is because we ultimately talk things out and I can see him improving in the future, but Christ his video on me was bad. From failing to understand my points, to leaving out things that make my points more reasonable, to not showing evidence for big claims, to defending a false accusation towards me, to poisoning the well and so much more. I could go through every bad point he makes in this video, but his video is nearly an hour long and I don't want my video to be 4 hours long. This video is the result of confirmation bias, Bracket literally admitted that in the imposter account segment. It's bias so bad that it turns everything one does into a bad thing, even if it originally wasn't. In the imposter account section. I deserve to have evidence faked on me to an extent and I'm the bad guy because I sought to get false accusations against me corrected. Yet Package gets little to no criticism in this video, and if he does, he's provided the most charitable interpretation, even if the most charitable interpretation isn't logical. Meanwhile, everything I do proves I'm this evil terrible guy, you should not interact with. It's why you get so many nonsensical points about me and trying to make people I've talked about look like victims. In that clip where Bracket compares me to Ben Shapiro of all people, he claims I harassed someone by the name of Spacey. You want to know what I did to harass Spacey? I asked him about accusations made towards the Litterbox critic, showed him my video, and made fun of him for blocking me because he's the same nigga who tried getting people to call Quankin's parents and get him on lol Kausa. So yeah, that's all I have to say on Walkin. Overall, Walkin's a sad little degenerate who needs his phone taken away, put into a mental ward, and desperately needs help. I encourage anyone who watches this video to share the drive to as many people as possible, and also share the Kathy in the package reviewer call out. Walken can't get away with this, as if he does, he'll spread his bad influence onto others and will get them in the same predicament as we did. Yes, I am going to make fun of a grown ass nigga that goes out of his way to tell his audience to call a 13 year old's parents whilst also telling them to put him on lol cow sites and make him into a lol cow with the intention to harass him whilst blocking me because I asked for an opinion on my video. If you can't handle someone you dislike asking you questions and being rude after you blocked them, don't be pulling stunts like this. Claiming I harassed Josh, whilst a claim I disagree with, I can at least understand why someone would come to that conclusion, but with Spacey my nigga? What I did was not harassment and I feel zero sympathy towards him. Bracket had my discord and that makes this video worse. He had a way to contact me so he could at least understand where I'm coming from. Since he barely knew who I was, but he wasn't interested because blocky bad damn I right? It's a video so bad and goofy that even Bracket's out here saying it was a goofy video. Bracket, you were making these ridiculous character attacks, like how I was a grifter or how I was manipulated by Will G and a 14 year old. Because I'm apparently both this evil cartoon villain scheming evil plans to lie about people I don't like and being smart enough to have those evil plans work because I had people agree with my video, and someone so easy to manipulate I was manipulated by a then 14 year old. Something's not adding up. If your feelings on someone contradict each other, I think it's a sign your hatred of someone is misguided, because if I was actually manipulated during this situation, which I, wasn't, you'd look like more of an asshole than the guy that made it his whole brand. You've done a lot that would make one come to the conclusion you're dishonest, but I believe you can change that, everyone makes a bad video, nobody is perfect and I hope to see improvement. I don't believe this video of yours should be an indicator of your channel's overall quality but instead, an example to learn from. I just expected better from you due to experience, and maybe this is just a fluke, or maybe your own channel is flawed, but I hope this is simply a fluke. I can respect the fact we were able to talk things out, I respect that you apologized for defending your false implication of me being a groomer. And I can respect you being cautious of dishonest people like Kamo or Jared trying to use you as a puppet to spread misinformation about me. Hope to see better content from you. Oh and one last thing bracket. 
I love how this is your most popular video outside of one done on the mysterious Mr. Enter, my nigga I made your channel. Anyways, if any of you take issue with this video, whether it's just the point you found to be flawed, or you thought the whole video sucked, provide some criticism in the comments or in the form of a video. One of my biggest annoyances is when a fan states they had a criticism of me, but don't share it until someone shits on me. I'd rather receive criticism I disagree with completely than no criticism at all. With all that said, I'm going to take a shit.